the social housing, housing action campaign um, is trying to popularize this tactic once again and really targeting housing associations um, and our group involves tenants and residents, whether they're social renters, full market renters, leaseholders, shared ownership or, or any other tenure, really anyone who pays rent or service charge um, is able to be involved in that group and, and sort of withhold some of that payment. <clears throat> and what's quite interesting about this, uh, at times there have been some quite, I'm on quite a lot of so social media groups for Shaq, and uh, sometimes there have been quite fierce debates and occasionally even tensions with individuals who will complain about the behaviour of their landlord, but are actually quite hostile to the advocacy of this tactic. Um, and we might be able to talk about some of that during the discussion. But nonetheless, it is starting to get traction. Today, we put out another story which ran in the Tribune last week um, about uh, uh, some service charge strikers. And that was really part of the growing press exposure that we've been able to get for tenants and residents of Hyde, of Bellway, Clarion, um, and others who've been withholding their rents or, or service charge payments. Interesting in uh, that, you know, this tactic is beginning to get a little bit of traction and probably because of all of the drivers of the housing crisis that people are aware of, obviously rough sleeping, regeneration, social cleansing, merger activity, all of those have increased over the last period. Council housing association homes being lent at social rent is falling, the numbers are falling. Overcrowding is increasing, more people are living in unsafe homes, um, whether they're hit by the unsafe cladding itself and then having to pay the cost of re remediation just to rub salt in the wound. And also housing associations are actually the most aggressive when it comes to evicting through the courts. Um, and, and obviously there are problems with disrepairs and sort of managed decline of, of estates. And at the same time, the legal protections and access to justice, which has happened through the courts, the ombudsman and the regulator are all problematic as people have found if they've tried to, to use those. I mean, we're not saying don't use those as well, but they can be really problematic. They have quite, you know, patchy remits, quite weak sanctions, um, and the processes are very time consuming, protracted and, and require an ease with bureaucracy, really, that a lot of people don't have. And because they take so long, it's obviously no good to go, you know, it's going to take eight months to get your case assigned to somebody at the ombudsman. It's not going to work where you're in immediate danger because there's, you know, water coming through your light fitting and, and the landlord is refusing to do anything about it. So we've got a housing system whereby housing associations are actually the least accountable tenure of landlord. And they're too big and too powerful to be regulated properly, but also to fail. So if they do start failing, it's the tax, taxpayer that is going to, you know, have to, to step in um, and, and help them find a rescue organisation, as we saw with one housing group going into Riverside recently, where the, the merger was really a rescue operation. Um, a little while ago, Shaq, as I said, formed a rent and service charge stri a strike group, um, which I'm just going to refer to as the strike group because that's a bit of a mouthful each time. And we formed that really to bring together those who are already withholding some of all or all of their payments um, and those who wanted to do so. So it was combining really two groups. And we offer support in the form of guidance, template letters, potential for wider campaigning if any landlord attempts to take action to, to recover arrears. Currently, we have strikers in over 20 landlords, including some who are private sector. Um, some of those are doing it as part of a tenant and resident association or a group on their estate, but others are doing it more as just one individual on, on an estate and their support network, if you like, is, is therefore the shack group rather than a tenant and resident association. On the legal side, we did get legal advice before we launched our group um, and we were we were sort of briefed on the, you know, obviously withholding payment can be a breach of tenancy or lease agreement in some cases, but in other cases, there is a right to withhold service charge payments. So it is legally protected under some circumstances, depending on, on the individual sort of tenancy. But you could look at the tenancy, um, your tenancy and the Landlord and Tenant Act 1985. Section 21A gives you, uh, talks about the right to withhold service charge payment. It's only protected under certain circumstances. So you'd need to really have a look and see whether that applied to you. But whether you're protected or not, there should be no need for any eviction to come out of withholding rent or service charge. 
um, provided you can pay the landlord what you will if you needed to do so. So for a start, legal action is obviously a lengthy pr process. The time frame would allow a tenant to decide whether they wanted to remove the ground for eviction by paying up or whether they wanted to make a stand and, and get support from Shack on that if they were threatened with that. Before going to court, there'd have to be a series of letters threatening legal action against the tenant and the court process itself takes time, excuse me. Even if a court does order repossession, there's another time gap while bailiffs are being instructed. So eviction is not something that could catch someone out by surprise. It doesn't creep up on you. You would get a lot of warning. And landlords can only take action after eight weeks of arrears. So one option would always be to be able to pay up, either to bring yourself back within, within the, the sort of eight week you know, time limit or time frame, or to pay up completely. Um, the second possibility, obviously, is, is that a landlord threatens action, but the tenant decides they want to make a stand. And in that case, they would get the full support of Shack, and we would obviously mount a big campaign and we'd bring, uh, bring in other um, housing campaign groups, to, you know, to get support for that. But we would need to, if we are going to really make this tactic mean anything, sorry, just excuse me again. We'd obviously have to build some momentum about it, which is part of what this meeting's about. Uh, rent or service charge strike itself is not an end in itself. Um, it's not about saving money. It's, it's about giving people the power to negotiate. It's about getting bargaining power really with the landlord. At the, at the moment, tenant, tenants and residents don't really have any way to force their landlord to genuinely engage, whether it's over errors in bills or disrepairs or dealing with antisocial behaviour or any other issue that they've got a dispute with their landlord over. And all of the me mechanisms, as we spoke about, that are supposed to give access to justice really are, are very difficult to use and all are within the control of other organisation. Um, this tactic has impact because it's financial and because it's entirely within the control of the tenant and res uh, tenants and residents. But to build a movement, we'd have to bring together tenants and residents, um, help inform them of how it works, why it's worth pursuing, and show them how to rely on their own power, really, and their ability to campaign to make it successful. So in all of that, any, um, and any tenants or residents who are involved in it would then become the ambassadors and the advocates, which people already are doing, you know, in advocating um, to their own groups even building small groups just on your estate, contacting the press locally or nationally to run stories and using social media really just to publicize it. Um, and of course, if anyone was doing it, we would really encourage them to register with our, our strike group and, and keep in touch with us um, and let us know about what's happening and any updates because then we can really help to amplify that message.